Good morning, students. Today, we will have another discussion about dual sports. So, we are going to talk about tennis today. Maybe some of you already have an experience playing this sport. For those who do not have an experience, this is a great way to start to become interested in this sport. So, for today's lesson, you should be able to understand the mechanics of the basic skills needed in the sport. Execute the basic skills needed in the sport properly. Develop total body reflexes and coordination. And lastly, exhibit concern for the safety of self and others. So before you start any game, materials or the equipment should all be ready. The materials needed are tennis racket, tennis ball, net, court or place to play. You should also be familiar with the playing area or the tennis court. Here you can see the different areas in a tennis court and their dimensions. So how is tennis played? Knowing the techniques is very important to play well. So the first technique is the forehand stroke, which is the most natural stroke in a tennis game. So how is it done? First, hold the racket as if shaking hands with it and hold the racket on its throat with your other hand. So next, place your feet comfortably apart with knees slightly bent. Then rotate or turn your right foot with your hip and shoulder also rotating. Then, take back the racket and lower it slightly below waist level. So you can adjust your step by shifting your weight by placing your left foot in front of the right. To hit the ball, execute the forward swing with the trunk and shoulders rotating, making your body uh, face the net at the point of contact. Execute follow through in the continuous forward and upward motion, finishing high in the front of the body. Watch this clip to better understand forehand stroke. The grip that I use is a modified Eastern grip. It's in between the Eastern and semi-Western. And as I prepare for the forehand swing, I have my left hand holding at the throat of the racket. I'm gonna turn my shoulder, and as I turn my shoulder, notice the lock position at the shoulder and at the hips.
The grip that I use is a modified Eastern grip. It's in between the Eastern and semi-Western. And as I prepare for the forehand swing, I have my left hand holding at the throat of the racket. I'm gonna turn my shoulder, and as I turn my shoulder, notice the lock position. The second technique is the backhand stroke, which is one of the most artistic strokes. It can be done by simply holding the racket like holding a sword, placing your feet comfortably apart with knees slightly bent. Then turn your shoulder to the left and automatically shift the weight of your body to the left foot. After that, take back the racket and lower it slightly below the waist level. To be in a proper position, place your right foot in front of the left, then uh, have your arm straight and your waist firm at the point of the contact. Finish by keeping your arm relatively straight in a continuous forward and upward motion. Watch this clip for better understanding of backhand stroke. The backhand Thompson approach shot. In this video, I want to focus more on the movement instead of on the technique. Now for the two-handed and the one-handed backhand, the difference is very few. The two-handed backhand, you rotate your body a little bit more. The one-handed backhand, you stay turned. However, the movement is the same for both. Now as I receive a short ball, I want to step in. When I step in towards the ball, this is the movement that you want to do prior to hitting the ball. So getting your racket set up well The backhand Thompson approach shot. In this video, I want to focus more on the movement instead of on the technique. Now for the two-handed and the one-handed backhand, the difference is very few. The two-handed backhand, you rotate your body a little bit more. The one-handed backhand, you stay turned. However, the movement is the same for both. Now as I receive a short ball, I want to step in. When I step in towards the ball, this is the movement that you want to do prior to hitting the ball. So getting your racket set up, whether it's a two-hand or a one-handed backhand, you want to cross over. If you're righty, cross over. Next is valley stroke, which is done by using backhand or forehand grip. So the position can be different depending on how far or near is the ball. If the ball is coming fast, just reach out and block the ball with the racket. When the ball is slightly out of reach, step out with your right foot. And if the ball is far out, step across with your left foot. So this is how you execute valley stroke. Watch carefully.
In the high forehand volley, movement and footwork is critical. Instead of hitting the ball, stopping, and then hitting the high volley, you want to be moving your feet and then hitting through the ball. This movement is going to give you momentum to hit through the ball and not be static and hitting. So first I have my racket set up high because the ball is going to be up high. I have my left arm uh, right next to my racket so that I can move and twist my sh In the high forehand volley, movement and footwork is critical. Instead of hitting the ball, stopping, and then hitting the high volley, you want to be moving your feet and then hitting through the ball. This movement is going to give you momentum to hit through the ball and not be static and hitting. So first I have my racket set up high because the ball is going to be up high. I have my left arm right next to my racket so that I can move and twist my shoulder. I don't want to run up there just like this, so I want to twist. And next is serving, which is a very important skill because serving alone can help you earn points. And the last one is scoring. In a tennis match, a set is won by the first side that six games with a two-game lead. So that's it for our discussion about playing tennis. I hope you learn a lot. See you next meeting. Thank you, keep safe, and God bless.